pleasant good day everyone and welcome to the first launch of immunization campaign today we have a panel with us um, we have ministry of health and also ministry of education we have the medical officer of health dr glensford joseph also we have the school safety officer in the ministry of education mr bernard fodra and the principal nursing officer who is also the former immunization manager nurse Julieta Cassius. Welcome. First, we'll have Dr. Joseph who will give us a brief overview as it relates to immunization and why is it important to immunize the children. Good morning. Thank you, Ms. Fornell, for having us delivering such an important message to the general public. The Ministry of Health and Wellness will continue to utilize immunization through vaccination as a key strategy to prevent the spread of vaccine preventable diseases in St. Lucia. Through the extended immunization program within the Ministry of Health and Wellness, Vaccination has been mandated as part of the Public Health Act. As such, it is important for persons to understand the need for vaccination. Vaccination is safe, it is effective, and it is a very important strategy used globally to prevent the spread of vaccine preventable diseases. St. Lucia would have made significant stride over the years as it was able to eliminate some of these vaccine preventable diseases. Globally, we have seen the elimination of smallpox during the 1977 period and in St. Lucia we were able to eradicate measles during the 1990 period. We have seen sorry, the 2019 period. We have seen during the 2019 the outbreak of measles globally and this was associated with areas or in areas where you have what is known as anti-vaxxers persons who are against and refuse vaccination in st lucia and many other territories that continue to vaccinate you did not find or have an outbreak of measles. In 2015, St. Lucia would have had an outbreak of pertussis, whooping cough, which is a vaccine preventable disease. However, the age group that was impacted was the group prior to the administration of the pertussis vaccine by age, they're less than three months of age. We would have made strides in terms of having what is known as a 95% vaccination coverage over the years within our targeted population, zero to five years. However, there is need for us to revisit and to ensure that we regain the grounds we would have lost in our immunization strategy. As a result, the government of St. Lucia and the Ministry of Health and Wellness would have prioritized vaccination as a key strategy 
to prevent the spread of vaccine preventable diseases. This program was launched July, September 2019, but was interrupted with several activities, including what we have now is the 2019, sorry, 2020 COVID-19 pandemic. We have seen the interruption of schools, the avoidance of mass gathering, and all these contributed to interruption in the vaccination program. What we have observed is a fall in our vaccination coverage to 84%. And it is critical that we restore and maintain 95% or above vaccination coverage that will produce what is known as herd immunity. With such a coverage of 95% and greater, you will decrease the risk of the spread of vaccine preventable disease. However, if your coverage is less than 95% and the lower it is, it increases the risk for the imputation and spread of vaccine preventable diseases. We will continue to work with our targeted population, zero to five year old, to ensure our coverage. It is important as pointed out to note that vaccination is safe, it is effective, and like other injections, persons may have a small irritation at the site of administration once it is an injectable. The ministry will continue to work with and across other agencies, ministries in a private public partnership as well as strengthening in particular with the Ministry of Education to ensure the availability and the service that is so essential to preventing vaccine preventable diseases is delivered to the targeted population, children zero to five year old. And at this time, I yield for the next intervention. Thank you very much for inviting the Ministry of Education to be part of this press conference. The Ministry of Education has had a very healthy partnership with the Ministry of Health and Wellness. And uh, partnering with the Ministry of Health in this campaign is nothing new to us. Over the years, the Ministry of, of Education, in partnership with the Ministry of Health, has been doing the immunization of our children entering kindergarten. However, due to COVID-19, this year was very difficult in getting our children immunized before they entered school for the academic year. And so therefore, as we continue the partnership, we continue to see that we want to encourage parents, especially parents of kindergarten to work with us, to work with the Ministry of Health as we continue the immunization process in our various schools, our infant and primary schools. The Ministry of, of Education 
continues to make itself available to the Ministry of Health as it relates to making our schools a healthier place for all of our children. And so this campaign, as it pertains to the Public Health Act, as well as the Education Act, under Division 3 of this Act, we see under the Admission and Attendance of Students, under number 28, Part D, and I quote, a certificate issued by a registered medical practitioner or the public health authorities is produced indicating that the child has been immunized as may be prescribed by regulations made under this act. So the Education Act actually speaks to children being vaccinated before they enter school. And so we want to encourage parents again, whilst you may not have gotten the opportunity to get your children immunized before the academic year, we want you to partner with your schools by bringing in the health cards to your schools so we can see how many children have been immunized and those who have not been. And for those who have not been, we want to encourage the parents. You can take your child to the nearest wellness center or you can make arrangements with your school and a nurse will come to the school to get your child immunized. You have heard from Dr. Joseph all the benefits and the importance of your child being immunized, to be protected from diseases that this immunization can help prevent your child from getting those various illnesses. And so again, we want to encourage parents, please give the support to the Ministry of Health, give the support to your schools, work with your teachers, work with the principals to ensure that the students get the immunization up to date. Again, we stand committed as a Ministry of Education in working in partnership with the Ministry of Health as we look to make our schools a healthier place for all of our children. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Bernice Kudra. Now we have with us the Principal Nursing Officer, Ms. Julieta Cassius, who will speak about the immunization campaign and what activities will be undertaken. Thank you, Ms. Fennell. Good morning to the team. So as we have heard, um, so the Ministry of Health in collaboration with the Ministry of Education and some of our other community um, partners, we will be embarking on a vaccination sensitization campaign for the next three months. So there are several activities that has been ongoing and other activities we will be undertaking as time goes by. Um, one of the most critical elements of our campaign was to first work internally to build our national vaccination registry. So with the fantastic help of our health information unit, we have been able to create a new functionality for our vaccine records where we'd be able to capture um, every single child's vaccine record um, within the Ministry of Health. And this is very important because we will also want to have that partnership with our private sectors as well. So we will be engaging our private pediatricians and we urge you as parents, whether you do go to a private pediatrician or you access care at our wellness centers, we really would want every single record, child's vaccine record. 
So it will assist us in more accurately determining what our vaccination coverage. As you have heard from Dr. Joseph, in terms of our first start of our campaign in 2019, that was interrupted by so many other, um, other factors in terms of we had the tropical storm and we had um, COVID-19. We were not able to adequately meet our objective. So hence the reason why we want to continue with this sensitization campaign this year so we can up our figures and we can more accurately determine what our coverage is to be able to reach our goal of 95% and more coverage. We know as been recommended by PAHO, we need to have our 95% coverage to be able to build enough herd immunity so every single one can be protected. And we don't have to wait on each person, on somebody else to indicate, to say, hey, I am not vaccinated, but majority of persons are vaccinated, so I will be protected. If we all say that, then it means that our immunity level will drop and hence we will be able to have an outbreak which we do not want um, right now we know a lot of persons are coming back home we have tourists coming back home so our country is still very porous yes we are we focus on COVID-19 at the moment however we do not know what other diseases that may come into our country so hence the reasons is very important at this point that we ensure all of our children, zero to five year olds, are vaccinated. So we will be working with the schools. Parents, we encourage you to bring in your health cards. We will be indicating what, at what period that the nurses will be present to just come in to review the cards. Our processes will change a bit because of COVID-19 protocols. Um, however, we cannot um, reduce our efforts in terms of ensuring that every single child at the school is vaccinated and then we can capture that record on our system. In addition to that, we'll also be conducting some community outreaches. So you will be seeing our health team within the various communities. Um, again, you will be told, it will be aired as to when this will happen. So it will also give you an opportunity. I know some persons may not necessarily be comfortable in going to the facilities at this time. However, we will be coming to you. We will be doing our community outreaches in addition to our home visits as well to ensure that um, the children are covered and they do have all of the required vaccines necessary. In addition to that, we also will be having some media discussions, again, to further sensitize parents on the importance of vaccination particularly at this time, and to be able to ensure it gives them an opportunity to be able to um, access all of the immunization services that would be available. We also will be conducting some, or creating rather, and distributing some vaccination leaflets. Again, that will speak on the safety and efficacy of vaccines. It will address some common questions that parents may have and it will also just give general information on vaccines and why vaccines are important. PSAs will also be aired. So this is an opportunity to also look out for the PSAs. And so it will give you an indication again on the importance of vaccines and where you can take your child to be vaccinated. Um, so these are some of the activities that we have planned for the month of October and November. And again, once all of this is done, it's all, it gives us an opportunity to review all of our vaccine records. And so by the, by the end of December, we'll be able to um, inform you, the public, of our coverages and our successes. Hopefully, it can be a very successful um, campaign. Um, and of course, we will reap that benefits the benefits of ensuring that every child is vaccinated to ensure that we can reduce any possible outbreaks um, of any diseases in St. Lucia as it relates to vaccine preventable diseases. So parents, again, it's an opportunity 
for you to ensure that your child is up to date with their vaccines. Um, we have created the schedule, vaccination schedule, which makes it easy to understand the schedules are at the schools. The schedule is also in your child's health card. So it's easy to follow and, to and for you to review yourself and to see whether your child has had all vaccines. Of course, if you are not sure, you can call the health center. You do not necessarily need to go. You can call the facility, your closest facility or any facility, and, to, and the uh, healthcare worker will assist you with any questions um, or uncertainties that you may have. So we just want to encourage parents to please, again, going back to our private, our, our parents who do take their children to private, we want to ensure that we also capture that data. So regardless of you going to a private physician, private pediatrician, we also urge you to come in so that we can get a record of your child's vaccination. So it will assist us in creating that national vaccination registry which will not benefit just us as a Ministry of Health, but also benefit you. Just last week, I had an individual call, an adult who was actually preparing for university, and she was asking for her vaccine records. Of course, she was not born in St. Lucia, but she did pass through one or two grades of our um, school system. And she and her private practitioner apparently had passed. So she wanted a copy of her records, and she was asking whether we had, unfortunately, of course, we did not have a record because she didn't pass through our system. So again, it's a benefit to you parents that when you do need a record, and a health record in terms of vaccine record is very important. It is something that is useful throughout your lifetime. So it's not something just for a zero to five or zero to 12 year old. This is something, a record that is needed throughout your lifetime because um, it's always been requested in terms of what is your vaccination status. So the benefit of us, of us building on that national vaccination registry is extremely important. So parents, please, we urge you to please bring in your cards um, so that we can review to ensure that your child is completely vaccinated and we can have um, vac um, vaccine preventable disease free country. Thank you. Thank you very much. We will now open to questions from the media. So, Le Jalford, HCS. My question is, how does the ministry anticipate dealing with any pushback against immunization, given the growing mistrust um, in vaccination, um, and, uh, and also the perceived link between vaccination and autism in children? Thanks for such an interesting question. Uh, first of all, we do acknowledge in St. Lucia, they have uh, parents, guardian, relatives who are not for vaccination. We do have a mechanism within the Ministry of Health and Wellness that is linked with the Ministry of Education that allows the Ministry of Education to channel those persons to the Ministry of Health. So that within health, we have our team that will engage and discuss with those persons the importance of vaccination, uh, letting them see the reason why their children Guard, or the children need to have such uh, vaccination. Uh, we do know that uh, because of culture, uh, we are going to have a challenge, but these messages are tailored to meet the cultural and linguistic need of those persons. So that channel is there to have that open discussion. Right. My last question would be, um, there are some factions who have already come out against any mandatory vaccination in regards to COVID-19. I know this is in regards to children, um, but since we're, this is something that we're dealing with right now, if a new vaccine is identified in the case of COVID-19, what will be the procedure for that? Like with all vaccines and vaccination processes in St. Lucia, 
we have been guided by the science. Uh, the ministry, and uh, by extension, St. Lucia, has been working with reputable agencies nationally, regionally, and internationally, and more so with the Pan American Health Organization through to the World Health Organization that provides us with reliable information as it relates to vaccines, among other things. As such, all intervention as it pertains to the use of any approved COVID-19 vaccine will be guided by the science as obtained from those credible sources. I just want to just benefit from this opportunity. Um, we are in the flu season. So um, we know we do have the influenza vaccine that is available. So I just want to urge members of the public to um, use that opportunity to go to the wellness centers. The vaccine is available. By the end of this week, the vaccine will be available at all wellness centers. So please, members of the public, the influenza vaccine is available at the end of this week at all facilities. So you are free to go in and, be, and get your, um, your flu shot. So it is available. We are in the flu season. Uh, we do not want to be compounded again with burden of, of high increases in, in, in H1N1, high increases in the flu. So it's an opportunity to go to your wellness centers and obtain the flu vaccine. Thank you. Thank you very much, Nurse Passius, for that information. So we have come to the end of the press launch. I want to thank you so much for taking part. Thank you.